Hello, welcome everybody. I'm gonna review briefly uh, last time presentation. Does anyone remember what was the subject that we were studying? I'm gonna tell everybody and remind everybody that love is, it was the subject and the, the method, methodology that we were using was the first mention plus chiasmatic and mirror structures. And the seven parable teaching tools that uh, we all know because Tiffany reviewed them just in 10 minutes ago or more, and we don't have to go and review them anymore, but we still have to remember those seven tools so we can understand and have a better understanding of the word and the message that Jesus Christ wants to give us. So we did um, a study on 1 Corinthians 13 and only the verse 7. And we came up with um, some answers, some messages from God. And to know him, to be instructed by him, is true wisdom. That's what it was all about on that study. So we did a comparing and contrasting. And if you remember, we did to bear, to bear all things is to protect tightly. It's the shell, the, the covering that God wants to place in each other and to protect us from the enemy. To endure is to remain. If we have this protection, this covering by God, we're gonna be enduring all things to remain under the protection and remain followers of Jesus, Jesus Christ, sorry. So one was with four and two was with three. To believe is equal to entrust. So with love, these things are happening. The conversion, the protection, the enduring, everything, and especially for us, he is going to entrust us with prophetic messages to give to the Levites and to the Nathanians later on. To hope, to expect, to know what is expecting for the next uh, dispensation to know why we are followers of Christ. And at this moment, what is the message that we have to give and the timely and everything that we need to know as priests to fulfill the prophetic you know, parable of Jesus Christ. Then, if we put all this together, we come up with these two phrases. Love protects us tightly so we can remain under the cover. And then two plus three says love entrusts us so we can prophesy. For us, this is very important, and uh, I am glad that 
Parminder share with all of us, all giving all these tools so we can see the deep message that Jesus Christ wants to give us, us as priests today. So today we're going to be in the current study, we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to do a comparing and contrasting of all the chapter. So there's going to be some sharing of screen and uh, discussion about this. So I'm going to start sharing the screen. I don't know if I, I know how to do this better. Good. This is not what I want. Are you using a Mac or PC? PC, yeah. Okay, then just use the control and tab and then you can go right to the screen you want. Control plus tab. This is what I want to do. Okay, well, let's make a map. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. So we're going to read the, ver the chapter in do a comparing and contrasting uh, like Tiffany did. So the first verse, we're gonna contrast with the sixth verse. And it says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, am only a ringing gong or a clanging cymbal. In contrasting with when we have love, it says, love takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices in the truth. Then we go to the, the second comparing and contrasting, verse 2 with verse 5. And it says in verse 2, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom, you know, measure all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have absolute faith so as to move mountains but have not love, I'm nothing. And contrasting with number 5, it is not love, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no account of wrongs. That's the contrasting. Then three with four, we'll read also this. If I give all I possess to the poor and exult in the surrender of my body, but have not love, I gain nothing. And number four, it says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. See, all this together, and then we compare and contrast eight with 13, and it says, love never fails. 
but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be restrained. Where there is knowledge, it will be dismissed. So this is the answer on the other side on comparing and contrasting and said, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love. Then we compare nine with 12, and it says, for we know in part, and we prophesy in, in part. 12 says, now we see but a dim reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Then the last one, 10 with 11, he says, but when the perfect comes, the partial passes away. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I set aside childish ways. And so now, We're going to do two lines in the screen. We're going to, if I know how to stop sharing. Yeah, stop sharing. OK. So we're going to erase this. And I'm going to come up with the two lines. Like Tiffany did, she did very nice. I really. I was pleased about that. Um, okay, so we're going to put one line without love. in the other line with law. See, that's the, the center of the message. So it says, tongues of men, you know, the tongues of men are without law and contrasting with suffering, Suffer it like in in the King James long. Claudio. Yes. Can you move your camera up just a little bit? Ah, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sorry. So tongues of angels that are messengers and love is kind. kind. Then sounding brass with envy yet not. Tingling symbol. Recording in progress. Vaunt not itself.
um, gift of prophecy. And uh, is not puffed up. Understand all mysteries. and uh, not behave itself unseemly. Then uh, all knowledge and uh, seek it not her own. This is just an example. You know, there are 12. Now I don't have space, but see how it's beautiful. You know, this is the message. If we don't have love, we don't have this. If we, we have love, we have super long suffering, kindness, not envying the people, not uh, vanaglory itself is not puffed up, not behave itself and simply like in a bad man manner, seek it not her own, always seek it the good for others and not th their own. And we can, there are 12 in 12 and we can, Go and do it. If you want to do it at home, give it a try. And they are all there. And uh, now we, we're going to evaluate this verse. So for a mature Christian, I'm going to erase this. Everybody... It's okay, it's in the verses. It's in the verse. So then we're gonna put like in a green, we're gonna put like, Law mature Christian, and then on the other on the other side we put faith. Maybe this is not the right color to use. It's better black. So this side is faith and hope. As an immature Christian. See, see how we can divide this also and say, so on one side, 
there is never love will never fail so never fails then in the other side prophecies tongues knowledge will pass you know either the prophetic message prophecies and tongues and knowledge will pass so on this side also speaking and understanding and thinking on both sides but the punchline is you know here we're gonna see face to face but here only with these two we're gonna have like a obscure understanding so we see we see in obscurity and you know through a glass how how a glass is it's like not let me see properly you know how it is then then this is important then shall i know even as also i am known and on the other part no in part so see how this message is clear you know when we use the tools of comparing and contra contrasting so I want to read some verses to back up what I said there. And uh, for example, you know, faith. I'm going to share again the screen. Hmm. Habakkuk three seventeen eighteen. Can someone help me to read the, the verse or Please. 
it's in the screen, right? It is. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither fruit be in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. See, this process is very painful. I know everybody here in the movement is, uh, is kind of struggling, myself also, because of this cutting off from the fold. You know, before we went to Seventh-day Adventist churches, we have protection, we have everything, we believe in whatever the pastor said. Now, no, it's not that easy. Now we have to be more proactive, understand the message, be loving each other, and thinking that how we, as a little minuscule group, are going to give this beautiful message to the whole world. It's unbelievable. You know, it's uh, sometimes, I don't want to say that word, but it's overwhelming. But God is going to do it. Because see what he says? Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And that's a promise that is going to be fulfilled. We are going to be joyful for what Jesus Christ did for us so we can see Robert, Bob, uh, Maria, whoever we know in heaven and she or he will be so glad that we took a time to understand the message to give the message to them so they can be enlightened and uh, not be on this part as an immature christian but be on the other part with love and as a mature Christian. And this is a parable, you know, Matthew 9, 20, 22, and it's about faith. So faith and hope are, we're going to see the proof. They are the form. You know, we start by faith, by believing in our God. And then we have the living testimony in us, giving testimony to others, you know, be more proactive with our neighbors. But that's, those are only forms. We go to church, we go to our Zoom meetings, we understand the prophetic message. Intellectually, we understand that, but the spirit is represented by law. If we don't have love and we are empty inside, those forms are not going to save us. We need to have the three things together. And they are going, as we're going to process in the study, see how that unfold. So here, for example, this woman, we know, everybody knows the story that has a blood, you know, coming all the time and touched the garment of Jesus Christ. And 
she had made whole for that hour. In that, at the same hour, the woman was made whole. And faith is by touching, is by understanding that is not one thing that is imaginary, but is reality. Faith make you understand that all what is written is true. And touching Jesus Christ by faith, we are going to be made whole and on the exterior. There is another parable in Mark 5, 25, and there are two intertwined, and the same things is touching. You know, when Paul, uh, when um, Peter and John went into the temple, also there was a touching uh, on, on the paralytic, and he could walk. It's that's the the meaning so in the in the hope part we can read for example acts 16 16 19 and it says and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed by a spirit of divination met us. She had brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, crying out and saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who show unto us the way of salvation. And this she did many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace and to the rulers. And we know the story afterwards, but this man had hope in this girl that was saying some, was a living testimony for the enemy to give about Paul and Barnabas to say the truth, but this cannot save you. You only can be saved if you have love for others, because that lady went on and on and on, annoying Paul and Silas, and, and Silas, no, not Barnabas, I'm sorry, I was. And that make you understand that without love, if she would have love, she would not do that to them. And another passage say, but when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out to the council, men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisee, for the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called into question. This is the hope that everybody has of the resurrection of the dead. Everybody in the movement, everybody as a Christian, that's what we hope for ages, you know, that's, that's the principal hope because Jesus Christ uh, died and rest and resurrected. We have a hope in the resurrection in the near future. But is that help you 
that's not gonna save even if you know that. And when neither Acts 27, 20, we know this. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken, then taken away. What is the Pandora recipient all full? Everything but hope. And this is what the wicked are going to lose when the plagues are going to fall on this earth. And the last one, 1 Peter 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. I'm not saying that this is not right. We need both things, faith, hope, and love together to be saved. So let's look at uh, the word love in some verses to, to see what is the meaning of this. Matthew 24, 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. This is unfortunately what is going to happen at the end. And we, we know that around us, that love is going away. And people are fanatic, fanatics and hate each other, one against the other more and more. John 15, 9, 11, and say, as the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So when we have a full, our joy is going to be full is because of love, because we are not going to miss that. And we are going to be filled up with love to our neighbor and love to God. John 19, 25 and 26 said, O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I know thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. See, this is very important to understand. God wants to give us this precious gift to everybody that wants that, but it requires very an effort, an effort to consciously understand that only with the form and without the spirit, we cannot go on and win the battle and the war against the enemy. Because Jesus Christ, when he was here in the earth, what he went through, he could win the enemy only by loving, loving in an extreme way, even the enemies 
that were crucifying him. And Colossians is a very dear book for me, especially as a Laodicean. If we read that book, there is a recipe for uh, coming out of the Laodicean condition. And it's also um, Paul, you know, give us how we can uh, accomplish that. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding, that they may knowledge the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. See, the words are very deceiving sometimes. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, in the spirit of love, rejoicing and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Colossians 2, 1, 5. And look what it says, Paul, in Colossians 4, 16. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans. And likewise, read the epistle from Laodicea. This is an interchange that we need to understand and grasp what is the message of the Colossians. Titus 2, 1 to 2. No, I'm sorry. First uh, John 2, 5, it says, but Whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know with that we are in him. So if we have the love, we know that we are with our God. And I'm going to stop sharing for now. And, uh, and we're going to start writing a line of this chapter. I don't know if I have all the time to do the line, but I'm going to start. I'm going to start with that. So we're going to start, of course, from darkness and uh, the time of the end. Could you please readjust the, um, the screen for the camera a little bit, please? Thank you for telling me. Thank you. That's better, yeah. Maybe next time uh, I'm going to... Um, learn how to use uh, board, you know, the Microsoft uh, whiteboard, you know, it would be maybe easier, but. So we're gonna start, you know, darkness. That's chapter 13 of first Corinthians. Verse 1, 
And I would, I would see, always see the hand. You know, a hand, it has first finger, second, third, fourth, and fifth, five fingers. One, look at the one, it's a little shorter, the shortest of all. Then the second is medium, but this in the middle is the longest. And the fourth one is at the same level as this. And that's kind of in the middle in between this and that. And when we see this pattern, you know, I wanna, I wanna show you, you know, when we go here, that's time of the end. Then we have to go down into the valley of decision where there is increasing of knowledge and formalization here in this valley. Then we have to come up, up on 9-11. Then we have to go on the valley of decision, increasing of knowledge and formalization. Then we have to come up with Sunday law here on top and pass all these tests. Then we have to go down in the valley of decision, then the same thing, close of probation, going here until the second coming. See, that's that's a beautiful uh, refiguration of, of the lines. So the first one is a symbol. Can you share the screen? Who knows what is a symbol? Ah, I'm going to share just briefly to show you what is a symbol. In, in the, I, I found in the internet is here. I'm going to share just really quick so you know. I don't know if you see. See, it's, it's a, a hollow in bronze instrument that people are using to make noise. Like he said, this is from Israel too. See how hollow is the structure inside and, uh, and it's of bronze. The metal, if you look from far distance, maybe in if it's very shiny and smooth. Maybe you can uh, miss, uh, miss seeing that and get uh, some uh, change it, changing the material from bronze to gold. Maybe from far distance, you can say that, uh, oh, that's gold, but it's not, it's bronze and it's hollow, there is a hole inside. It's just an out, out, uh, outline of the metal, just to show you how it looks. Is that okay? So we start in verse one, with that, and it's, of course, 1989. And then the second is line upon line, the increasing of knowledge of prophecy, that's verse Two, if you want to read it later, 
And then we have verse three, that is Daniel, of course, 40 to 45, 11, 40 to 45. Then we reach the another big waymark that is 9-11. As everybody knows, that's the verse four. Then again, we have verse five. And it's the 2520, 2009, then verse five, six, sorry, it's time. It's 2012, then another big waymark that is a Sunday law and is 2014, as we know, then another waymark, 2016, Acts 27, And uh, <clears throat> then, I don't know if I have space, but uh, then 2018, it's uh, the midnight cry as we know. Then November, Nine, two thousand nineteen. Then the increase of knowledge, May to September twenty twenty. Then now we know that what is this way mark is August 15 and is the formalization because of the Taliban. And finally, the last one, it's Panyu. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen. So this is going to be the first harvest. And this is verse 7, which is very, these are the verses that we have to read you know, deeply because they are waymarks that are more pronounced. And then verse eight, verse nine, verse 10, verse 11, verse 12, and finally verse 13, which is a big one for us. We, we can add also, this is Boston, Concord, Exeter. And this is the test. And in all the waymarks are the same. So I will do this. This is the part that Jeff did as a first angel, 
then this is Parminder. as a second angel. And now this is Tess as a third angel. So see how we go in. If you read each verse, pay attention to these verses. Also, 10 white. My understanding is this that this is this is very important. That's is Pentecost. And love is going to be involved here. We're going to see be shallow and uh, bronze as a metal here coming from the world. Even if we came from Seventh-day Adventist Church, you know, I didn't know anything about this message coming here, and then we have to go all the way understanding all the messages that we have and pass all these tests until we reach the final test. And we're going to see not blurry, not in, uh, in darkness, but we're going to see face to face because mm -hmm. all these tools that we have and we if we use it as we should we're gonna see the message clear clear and powerful because without power which is the love it, we cannot cannot finalize our process of becoming a very um, a Christian that is is mature, loving, have faith, have hope, and guess what? At the end is gonna be happy and joyful. So the final, I would say, I don't know if this is all. So wait. You know, it's until here, then hope you know, for the living testimony that we have, plus hope, plus unselfish, Love is going to be equal to happiness. And it's not this word in the Constitution of American Constitution? Yeah, it is there. And everybody is going to know and want to pursue happiness, but maybe they don't know that is true 
all these efforts in the in tools that we have, praise the Lord. Okay. No, hold on. Just that we are going to be happy in the Lord forever and ever and ever. And we're going to keep studying the whole Bible, the whole universe in a manner that we will never regret to have left all behind us to follow and to pick up the cross of Jesus Christ, to understand his messages, and to understand that hierarchical, hierarchical structure is important because we have these tools is because of Jeff, because of Parminder, because of Tess, they sacrifice their lives. For us to understand this is the same thing. Our head and our heart, they have to cooperate. But we know that our heart has to be subdued by the reasoning of what is the message? What is that we have to do? And with the slow uh, moving uh, thoughts that we have, we need to understand what is the path that we have to follow in helping with the heart, with love, we're going to start and pursue until the final victory is won forever. And what is that final victory? It's going to be death. There is not going to be any more father, mother missing, children, or friends that are going to be separated from us, never more. And we are gonna be joyful in sharing a living testimonies to the whole universe, to tell new generations what was our experience so they cannot fall into the trap in the future because faith is gonna be forever. Hope is going to be forever. And selfish love is going to be forever. And that's what we need to understand now. Before is too late. When the summer has passed, the harvest has gone, we already see that the first harvest, harvest it's almost over. We have other two harvested. And then Jesus Christ is coming to keep us with him forever and ever. And nobody is going to snatch out of her or his hand and the father's hand. Nobody. Love is going to be there. Nobody is going to take away from us love. And I, I encourage you, Lord, everybody, I encourage you to pray for each other. When I wake up in the morning, think about Katya. Lord, make her day happy there bless her and when i in the morning when i wake up and think about henry please lord help him in all the tasks that he is going to have this day and effie 
and Debbie and Annabelle that we know she's going through a rough time and Allison, Tiffany, David, Tabo, Trevor, Maka, and David. And sorry if I miss somebody. We need to pray for each other. Each morning, each night when we come back, thank you, Lord, for helping Henry in his tasks. Thank you for helping Debbie in placing all these presentations and all the organization that she has to do. Lord, he is alive. He is a God of living people, not of death. He's the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And they are in the life, in the book of life written. He is a God that is love and he's going to save He's going to save us all. Let's pray. If you kneel with me, we close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are here in front of your throne. Not because I'm special, not because I know a lot of stuff, but because of you, because of the grace that Jesus Christ gave me. I'm asking you, Lord, bless this movement, bless your church. We have to be ready to give this wonderful, wonderful message to everybody. Oh, Lord, keep us in your hand until the end with five fingers, five tests that we are going to overcome and that also we can reach and touch the Levites so they can believe and hope and have love for their friends, their neighbors, and you. Oh, Lord, help us also to know that you are in control, that nothing is not of your control. Thank you for everything, Lord. We ask you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And Claudio, thank you very, very much. We're going to, I'm just interjecting because it's our first time, but you can ask for questions and, and and comments or anything further while the recording still goes. I know uh, I, if uh, I have to another time, uh, it's 35. I don't want to over do it. But if you say so, yeah. If anybody has like a comment, a any question that is in the limits of chapter 13, please don't come up with uh, maybe another subject, please. Could I see the board so I can get a picture of it? Okay. Good that I asked the P because I missed the P in happiness. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I just want to see the line. That's good. Uh, just a sec. 
is just a starting because then we can go verse by verse exactly how it, it aligns with all the things. You know, the verse one with verse two, verse three, but it will take more time to do that. You can do it at home like Tiffany did. She did a very good job. I was very impressed by that. And, um, and you'll see, it's going to be a reward for you. Okay. Done? Yeah, okay. I am. Anybody else have to, I don't know. You know, the study of the ap uh, apus, apis bull is very important. That was done in 2020 uh, by Tess in Explain us, you know, what is the form, you know, the exterior, and what is the spirit, that interior part? Because it's all about humble ourselves. It's a quality again and again in all the things that we study. Equality applies in all the vows. In all the rules, everything is about equality. That's my taken. I don't know. Oh, thank you, Claudio, very much. And I'm going to stop the recording now.